Hi, this is Denise Matthew. I hope you're doing well. I'm back again to talk about the full moon happening on June 3rd or 4th, depending upon where you are in the world. And it's going to be happening at 13 degrees Sagittarius. The first thing I wanted to say about this full moon is that it is very similar to a new moon we're having at the end of the month, like I think around the 18th of June. They both have the 3536 channel activated, which means that we're going through some emotional energy for this month. And as much as we have the emotional energy, we also have this ability to see the chaos or crisis in our lives. The things that have been hidden in our lives that we may not have noticed that needed some work and suddenly things will pop up or there is potential for them to pop up to show you where shifts and changes may be required or maybe where you need to put your focus going forward so that you're getting the most impact for the energy that you're expending. Overall, we have a lot of first, second, and third lines, and mostly second and third lines. We could even say that initiation could be part of this full moon because this would be considered a manifestor energy that is globally activated. Of course, that doesn't make us manifestors, but it does kind of activate a theme of initiating or being initiated by life. In this case, it's related to the second lines, which can be getting the call that's important to you. It also can be with the second line, it can be having natural talents that are being activated because you're being initiated in a way that you are able to put your best foot forward and show the world something that is unique to only you. The other perspective is that we have a lot of third line energy. And when we have third line energy, it's really talking about this idea of experimentation and adaptation. We are learning how to navigate the world. In other words, there are things that we may not know. We, there's experiences that we need to advance our lives. And that really does come through with the full activation of the 3536 channel, where we have uh, Neptune that has been veiling the things that the experiences that we do need, the things that we need to go through so that we can be stronger or so that we can navigate the future. When we have the gate 35 and the line three, I think the easiest way to describe the gate 35 line three is that it would be considered potentially the line of the truth teller. In other words, you might be going along your life and doing the same things, but then somebody suddenly comes out of the blue and they say, you know, you've been doing this your whole life. And it's not getting you what you want. Maybe you could change it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to adopt that or take that in or believe what they're saying. But what it does do is it opens your eyes to something potentially that can shift you in a different way. Now, not every person or every call will be correct for you. But if it is the correct call, if it is the correct um, activation of the truth, then it can shift your trajectory where you're starting to look for experiences or you're starting to look in a different direction or you're starting to look at the world through a different lens where you can see that there is places where if you shift things up, you'll probably get more back for what you're putting in. And ultimately, that's the biggest deal. You want to put your energy into something that is actually going to give you something back. I think the most frustrating part of life is that we put energy into things that don't give us results. And then we become frustrated, then we want to quit. But instead of doing that, it's like saying you start something and you start a business or you start some kind of a plan or project, a book, whatever you're writing or doing or or whatever you're sort of wanting to put your energy into, and you have this really fixed way of what you think it should look like, and you could continue on that fixed way without bending at all, even though there are signs in, that are that are saying that maybe you should change this up a little bit, but instead you kind of keep moving forward, and then you get to the finish line, and, and you feel like you don't feel satisfied with what you've gotten. Alternatively, and I think that this is kind of the story of life is that we're always having to, you know, tweak the the path that we're walking just to take in something new. Oh, it's, and if seeing if something's out of balance, trying to bring it into balance and those types of things. So the activation of the 3536 channel is a manifesting energy, which means that you can start to manifest those experiences that you need, as I said, to get you ahead in life. And I would say one of the biggest stumbling blocks that we could face when we have the 35 activated, the gate 35 activated, is this idea of expectation. Because I would say that um, the gate 35 is kind of the gate of expectation where you always feel like you can feel like, OK, well, if I do A, B and C, then I will always get D. But that doesn't necessarily happen. And that's kind of where we need to you know, pull it back in and go, OK, 
I can do this, this, and this, but it doesn't mean that I will always get this. So being open to what the results are. When we're looking at the 35, 36 channel, we are looking at experiential energy, which means that it's not logical energy. There's no pattern here. There's only this jumping in and seeing what you get. And, you know, everything that we do in life is experience that we can build on. I think that if you look at everything, no matter what you consider, if it, you considered it was something that was positive or something that didn't work the way you wanted to, it's always a chance for you to gather what you can from it and use it going in your journey forward. And with Mars in the gate 33, there's a p potential that we may not be stopping and slowing down. The gate 33 is an alone gate where we want to sit there and kind of sit with our, our experiences, you know, kind of decide. It's like when you go on a vacation and you take a bunch of pictures and you go home and you go through your pictures and you're looking at it and you go, oh, well, this is what this happened. And it's almost like you're um, imprinting your, your soul with those memories of what actually happened on your journey. If that doesn't happen, you truly don't get the fullness of the experience because we know that the only thing that really endures in life are our memories. Experiences will come and go. We will go through experiences so with experiential energy, we would say that the gate 33 is a stop codon. It is a stop codon, which means that's the end of the process. The end of the process is you go through an experience and then you, you assimilate it into your life. You have a remembrance because that is what it is. It's the gate of remembrance. With Mars there, it's saying, oh, let's just jump into something new and not take the time to unwind and to retreat and to be alone with your with your um, energy to process what actually happened. There is potential for a push pull where Mars is saying, just keep moving forward. When in truth, being away from the fray, allowing yourself to kind of sit with your energy and to pick out what matters the most to you. And sometimes even sharing your stories with others might be something that you want to do. We do have Venus in the gate 56 line three. And again, with Venus in the gate 56 line three, it is in detriment as well. What this brings is this idea of wanting people wanting to talk at you as opposed to talk to you. So that might be the energy that we're feeling as well. So we have Mars saying, get out there, keep moving forward. We have the 3536 channel activated where we're hungry for something new, a new thrill, a new exciting adventure, something that we haven't done before. And, you know, with a lot of expectation potentially built within it. And we also have the gate 56 activated, which is this idea of um, people wanting to give you what their rundown of, of, the, of life and the stories are um, and, and kind of like really wanted to, wanting to take the uh, front and center stage. This can work out where you want to give a presentation or something like that, or people are talking for you instead of talking um, or instead of allowing you to talk for yourself or they're talking over you. This is potential. We have four throat gates that are activated, which means a lot of people are going to be talking about what's happening in their lives. It is connected to the solar plexus, which is bringing this experiential energy and again, manifesting energy, but everybody might be wanting to talk about what they want to talk about. So this full moon might be a time to have some space and time to be alone, to, to process what's going on, to unhook from social media, from media of all kinds, from, from a lot of the um, noise of life. And to be able to go in your own process and enjoy, you know, just being in your own space away from everything and allowing yourself to prepare for your next adventure, not necessarily jump into something new because the potential might be there to want to jump into something new because this is does bring a very hungry energy for something new. And it could be sex. It could be um, good food. It could be uh, related to activities of every kind. Uh, anything that you wanted to do that is new, that it's almost like an insatiability is potential here with this full moon. So ultimately seeing how that might feel and seeing people maybe going around and trying to, you know, get, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. And, and these are my expectations. And, you know, a lot of people not feeling as if they got their money's worth. They don't, they're, they're not getting what they think they're going to get. And and that can be emotionally impactful as well because we do have the full channel. If you add in Jupiter in the gate 27 line three, which is actually called the line of greed, this is saying that there's potential to want to have more than what is necessary, to want to 
have like it's like again this bottomless pit of need and it's to and hunger to get something that would fill you and it, again it's experiential energy it's something to experience it's living life experiential energy is always about living life it isn't about patterns or anything like that it's about just getting out in the world and seeing what what shows up in your reality and that's perfectly fine and well but if it becomes this addiction where, you know, it's one to the next, to the next, to the next, and there's not really any stopping. And that's when we sort of lose the thread of what it all means. And it becomes about filling or trying to fill ourselves with something that may ne- that will probably never really satiate us because it's, it's, it's something that is beyond that. It is this feeling of an emptiness for something new when in reality all we need is to sort of sit with our energy and kind of look at our lives and I think that if we have this recollection time and a lot of times you know you're living your life and you're going through things and and you think you know I don't have anything good I you know or whatever but when you sit down and you start to take stock of what in reality you do have in your life and the experiences you've had and and you know how life has played out for you there are glimmers of of light within all of it we have a tendency as a collective sometimes to really focus on the things that didn't go right, as opposed to the things that did go right. And that's why going back to this gate 33, having that time of reflection is really important with Mercury in the gate 23, as well as Uranus. This is where we have this real push and drive by people to try and get us on board or get you on board with the new way of things. And once again, we have this idea of people, kind of giving you the impression or uh, making you feel as though they know better than you. I mean, it's pretty obvious right now in the collective that we are in a, a massive time of shifts and changes. We know that. I mean, just with the dawn of AI and a lot of the things that are happening around the world, we know that things are shifting and we don't really know exactly where everything is going because there is so much mutative energy with Uranus in the gate 23 and Pluto in the gate 60 and the 360 channel being activated later on uh, in the month of June where the nodes are going to move. So we have a lot of this energy for a lot of shifts and changes and we don't really know where it's going. There's this idea that some people will believe that they actually know the direction and the and the future of where we're going. And that's not necessarily too true, but with Mercury in the gate 23, people might be giving you the impression that they know where whatever they know already they have all the answers they they know everything that's going to happen and you better get on board because if you don't you're going to lose out so ultimately to thyself be true knowing what is correct for you knowing your truth sticking with what feels right for you you're going to feel that alignment with your truth and if somebody is talking about something that just doesn't jibe then that is not your truth and you're and you're going to feel that with Uranus in the gate 23 line two, this is an energy of reminding us that, yes, we do have a lot of technology. We do have a lot of different things that are happening in our world. But there's also this idea of simplicity, of getting back to the basics of life, of moving through life in a way where you are using your hands more. Because I think that that is sort of the balance, the counterbalance to all the the um, technology advances that we're having here. I think that anything that is moving too far on one side and there is no balance, and I think that in in a lot of ways that might be where we're at right now, is to kind of have the counterbalance of a handmade life. And, and that's really what the Gate 23 can be about, a handmade life or simplicity. So if we see that we have a lot of technology growing and, and that's going to be part of our new reality, can we still connect in a way to life in ways that make us feel like we're human and in ways that, you know, we're out in the world uh, doing things that make us feel like, yes, we're connecting with nature. We're gardening. Yes. We're connecting with our food. We're making our food. We're doing handmade food, connecting with your creativity, anything that you like to do that is, is simple. It's a simple perspective of um, just creating something that is created by your hands alone. There's no, um, there's no workmanship that comes from a factory or anything like that. That is something that is, is, is like the counterbalance that comes with all this technology, as odd as it sounds. It's almost like people might be so overwhelmed with so much technology and so much 
um, AI and so much of the robotics and the things that are shifting so much, they want to get back to their roots of what it feels like to be human because AI is not human. It is completely different than, than us. And so remaining and retaining our humanity by having the simplicity of life might feel really good, especially you know, as we go forward, but this is this full moon is kind of bringing that energy and that focus and that theme up for us all. And finally, with Saturn in the gate 37 line two being activated with the solar plexus that we have activated globally, it really is this idea that more people might be leaning on you for support, especially with Jupiter in the gate 27 line three. So taking care of you, making sure that you're getting what you need as much as you're giving and really looking at the balance in your life to make sure that things are in balance. If you look at the flow of life, it's like an infinity symbol. It's always flowing back and forth. And that is sort of the balance balance of, of life. The earth and the moon in the gate five, this is encouraging everyone to really step into your own flow, your own patterns, what makes you feel good. Because there could be a lot of noise about you should do this this is the best thing and you know this is what you need to change in your life but ultimately it all comes back to what feels right and true for you with the earth and the moon in the gate five line three it is easier to step away from your truth and kind of feel like you need to kind of go with what other people are saying and of course once you get into that new flow which is not really your flow it can feel uncomfortable and you know that it's not correct for you. So instead of letting that happen, it, it is about sort of allowing your flow to be as it is. I think that when somebody comes to you and says, this is really good, or they want to initiate you into something new, you will have a feeling of this is correct or this isn't correct for me. There's an inner knowing that gives you a hit of some kind. There is a way that you know that is not correct for you. But what happens is you might get this initial hit. Your body is saying, no, this doesn't feel good. But then your mind says, oh, but maybe I should. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. The more you start to learn to connect with what your body feels good at, about or what your body likes, then that actually can bring you onto the path of, of uh, least resistance into the flow of life. So if I was to sum up after my very long conversation about this moon, if I was to sum up sort of um, a few sentences, I would say that we might have, this full moon may really bring this feeling of wanting to get out there and find some thrills in life, but music only comes from the pauses in the notes. If we have one long note in music, it isn't music. It's just a long note. But it's like when we have the pauses, you get a melody. And that's really what life is about. So sometimes we need to retreat to go into our own process to appreciate where we've been and to charter a new plan for where we want to go in the future. If we never, ever have that reminiscence or the recollection of where we've been, it's pretty difficult to really learn the lessons that we need going forward in life. And I think that that overall is what the full moon is trying to tell us. So having said that, I hope you have a wonderful full moon and I will be back soon. Until then, take care and bye for now.